All right, I've turned my views towards the Turning Point USA group, and one of their contributors, Lauren Chen, she appears in my feed quite regularly. This is a video about, I guess, her work ethics mixed with something else. So we're going to watch it, see what she says, and then we're going to do some research on it in a store that is pretty much all women. So whenever they're like addressing us or when they're talking, they're always like, hey ladies. So I've taken it upon myself as someone that is non-binary to use this uh, to not listen. And whenever anyone addresses a group as ladies, I am. This is essentially a reaction to a reaction. Turning Point USA does this quite often in order to kind of I don't know, pigeonhole or glamorize their own ideas or to basically mischaracterize something. So I'm going to see what that is for this. I'm not included. So when they say, hey, ladies, let's like stop talking or hey, ladies, let's like get to work. I will do none of it because you're not talking to me. You're not talking to me. So they did a study that showed that applicants for jobs that included pronouns in their bios or whatever were less likely to get a callback. And this Wait, wait, so people who include pronouns in their resumes are less likely to get a callback. I wonder if that's true. That kind of sounds like it would be true. It'd be just like if you included a particular age or something like that in a resume, you also won't as often get a callback. Looks like we've got a few results here popping up. Let's see what that study says. Now, this is part of the problem, right? A lot of these organizations, they do not post where they did their research, where they found stuff. A lot of times it's a big red flag, right? Um, if someone's not willing to produce what they looked at or what their evidence consisted of, that is for me, someone like me, a concern because then I have to guess maybe it's a million, you know, one of these articles, or maybe it's a particular article with a particular study, and I never found it, right? But we're going to take a look at these. Okay, so this is a fair assessment from a personal person's like coaching advice. They're basically just saying, put them in there if you feel like you're in a trustworthy space or a safe space, right? It can also be a way of helping to identify uh, if the company is right for you in a kind of back and forth. Um, but it's also saying, hey, you might also want to leave them off in case you're interviewing for a more conservative place or a place you don't know or a place that's more formal because someone might take uh, it the wrong way or not understand. So that's not a study. Uh, so we're going to kind of skip that one. It doesn't have any links to studies, but advice. Uh, this is the same article. Here we go. Here's a report. March 2nd, 2023. That's pretty close. So that could be a new a new study, something that she's talking about from the original video. It's good. There's a link to a new report. And that says people believe it would hurt their job search. It's not yet a real study, but at least it's an understanding of where people are coming from. Like if if I identify it as not binary and I put they, them on my uh, resume, I feel like it could hurt my chances. Right? That's what this is saying up here. And that their gender identity has affected their workplace experience. That seems pretty clear. A little over half people, half of people, um, say it's very or somewhat negatively impacted their work experience. Sure. Okay, so... Here's the phantom resume test. So they did 180 unique, they responded to 180 unique job postings with two identical phantom resumes just to test if it's bias or something else, right? They used a gender ambiguous name. They've done this with other studies too, like putting a, a, a male sounding name and a female sounding name on, on a resume. Um, putting different ethnicity kind of sounding names on resumes to see if people would respond poorly, 
right? That, so you see, you see a similar study crop up for something other than this. They only tested, so to be clear, they only tested they, them, not any other pronouns like she, her, or he, him. And the pronouns received 8% less, in, less interest than the one without. So these are, again, identical resumes. And the resumes where the only difference was they, them, was included in the information, saw 8% less interest. I wonder if that could, study goes into more information. Oh, here's the actual study. So this part's not surprising that across the board, non-binary folks worried that expressing their gender identity during a job search would harm their employment prospects. That, that's really, I mean, we shouldn't have that fear, right? Um, and there shouldn't be that concern in the sense that at least in the United States, we very much present the idea that we're a meritocracy. Your the, your work ethic or what you do at work or how you apply to the jobs, that's what matters. Not your gender, not your race, not anything. And then here's the A-B test. So, right, this is, um, they modeled their research on a well-known study conducted by the University of Chicago and Massachusetts Institute of Technology which evaluated racial bias. It's probably the one I was talking about. Um, they did the phantom. So here it is. They, them, right there versus not having it. They measured interest in each applicant based on whether the applicant received any request for additional information, such as a phone screen, interview request, or skills assessment. So any interest at all counted. Um, which is, of course, what you want. You actually feel good about those things when a job calls you back or asks you for more info. It tells you that they're interested, that you're probably working your way towards getting that interview or job. And then they, it looks like they asked them some questions. So when they asked about the they, them test, the phantom, the, the resume that had the they, them pronouns, they perceived these resumes less favor, favorably. 72% of managers said they'd contact the applicant on the control resume, but only 69% would want to interview the applicant whose resume contained they, them pronouns. That is definitely a less, right? Oh, wow. So they asked the managers if there was anything the applicants could improve about their resumes and several hiring managers revealed blatant biases and even bigotry against non-binary job seekers. These professionals worked in a range of industries, including those that are often considered more progressive, such as entertainment and higher education. This person seems like a decent fit on paper, though I'm not interested in the drama that a person who thinks they are a they-them brings with them. Take off the pronouns? I would trash the resume for that reason alone. Immediately balk at the supposed gender-neutral pronoun of they, them. It doesn't make sense when used like this and is, at its root, an attack on women. That's from a man, by the way. I'm not a big fan of the pronouns at the top of the page. Anyways, I'll put this link in the research. You can read the rest of them yourself. These are, of course, just examples. Um, we did see a change. It wasn't um, a dramatic change. There's that 3% of uh, folks um, from 72 to 69 percent for any interest at all but then was more than that for actual potential hiring like so the applicant so here's the compared with the web with that right the applicant with non-barry pronouns was seven percent less qualified for the job that's what they said five percent less positive about the resume with non-binary issues and four percent less likely to invite the non-barry non-binary applicant for an initial interview so 3% less likely to even contact the person, let alone interview, right? So but this pretty much showcases, at least at hiring, which is what uh, Lauren is talking about, that there is a real bias in effect. 
Now she doesn't say the percentages in the little video so far. Maybe she'll get to that. She doesn't quote this this study. This is the only study that seemed to like really pop up. Lots of people targeted it through the search. Um, can't see much else. Let's see what else she has to say. It's a very short video, so can't imagine there's much more. This is exactly why. It's nothing to do with gender. It's just because of the attitude, the narcissism, and the entitlement that tends to come with people who are obsessed with pronouns. The fact that this woman would actually say these things or think these things about her boss telling her to do something is outrageous and a very good a very good reason why you should be wary about hiring these type of people. Okay, so the title calls folks narcissists who want you to use their preferred pronouns. That's clearly not true. Um, that's a that's just an ad hominem ad hominem. Oh my goodness, I can't speak. That is just an attack on the person's character to win the argument instead of actually using data. Then the data is thrown in there to say, hey, this is what happened so that we notice that there's a real change or right? like a real actual effect from someone using they, them. And it has only to do with gender identity, not with anything else as the phantom resume indicated, right? That was a good AB test. Now, if Lauren can provide a different study that showcases no disparity, but only work ethic as a concern, right? Those people in the study had the same uh, biased conversation that she is having, right? Like a presumption. That said, a person who is doing a job that they are at and doesn't want to do the job well, that's a problem uh, for me. I'm just ignoring it, but I don't know the full extent of the story. This is probably a, just a cut clip or just another piece. Has, if the person's presented their preferred pronouns and people are purposefully ignoring it, there may not always be a good like HR scenario or other situation. That doesn't justify not doing work, uh, but it does paint a bigger picture of the workplace environment that we just don't know. What we do know is that the reasons Lauren gave about why people do not hire folks or don't reach out to or do callbacks for people who have they, them, not any gender pronouns, but they, them specifically on their resume is not because of work ethic. It's not because of uh, individuals not wanting those jobs or being willing to work at them. It was a quick video. Hopefully this gets out soon and we can just kind of move on with our lives. Have a good one. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.